a particularly interesting pattern in the simplifying conditional expression series, and one that I'll admit I've rarely ever seen used, is called introduce null object. The motivation here is that you have repeated checks for a null value, and you should replace the null value with a concrete object which represents the null value. So first let's take a look at our objects here. We have a site which has a customer. A customer has several several properties on it, which some of which are also types from these other classes here, a billing plan, a payment history, which has some functionality on it. But more to the point of the pattern is how this code is used. So we get our customer and now we want to get our billing plan. Well, customer could be null. So if it is, we go with the default billing plan. Otherwise, we get the customer's billing plan. Same thing with the name. Same thing with these weeks delinquent here. We always have to have these null checks. And then we'll go with default values if we don't, if we don't find them. In fact, here, we also needed a null check on the payment history. This is assuming something about the customer object that may not be true. That, that payment history may itself be null. So all of these repeated checks for null are sort of getting in the way of what the code is actually trying to do. And all of these default values should probably be encapsulated on an object itself instead of just throughout this consuming code. So the first thing we're going to do with the customer object in this case is create our null object. And it will inherit from the customer object. And then one thing we'll do here is add a factory to the customer object to create a null customer so that consuming code never has to really know about the null customer class itself. It'll just be dealing with customer objects directly. We'll just call it create null. And then on the customer object, we'll create a virtual property to check for that null, that whether or not the object itself is, is the null version or not. Make that virtual since the null one will override it. The concrete customer will always return false, whereas the null customer will always return true. Now that we have our null customer object, now comes the more difficult part of this pattern, and there's really no easy way to do this. This is probably the part that requires the most work and is the most prone to potential error. And that is to go through all of the consuming code and replace checks for null with checks against this is null. Now in this example, it's easy enough to do. However, in a larger domain of code, that might not be the case. And so a lot of that work would also determine whether or not this pattern is really going to pay off, whether we are really going to benefit from the use of this pattern. So now that we've done that, we can start moving some of this default functionality into this customer object. I think before we do that, we need to actually use the null customer. So let's turn this auto-implemented field into a manually implemented field so that we can add some functionality to it. So now here, we still have the possibility of a null customer. And so the functionality that we're adding here is to check for that null. And if, it, if it's 
really null, then we will return our create null customer. Now I realize we just introduced a check for null. We're always going to have to do that somewhere. One of the purposes of this pattern is to minimize and centralize that as much as possible, to encapsulate that within an object somewhere. So for this example, we have just this one place where we're going to be checking for null here. Now, in consuming code in a larger domain, we could end up with a lot of these. And again, that's really the difficult part of this pattern. And that's the part that determines whether or not we're really getting a lot of bang for our buck with this. So now that we have this, we know that consuming code is always going to receive a concrete customer of some kind, whether it's the real one or the null one. And so we can start overriding some of these members to return the default values that we can encapsulate within the null customer object. Let's start with the simple one, which is name. I believe the default in this case was occupant. And so here, customer name will always just be customer.name. And so we don't need the rest of this conditional at all. And now that behavior of a default value has been moved on to the object itself instead of littered throughout potentially many places in consuming code. So now let's move on to the billing plan. First we'll make this virtual. There's our default value. And so once again here, Billing plan will always just be customer.plan. And this conditional here is no longer needed. Now we'll move on to a slightly more interesting case here, the weeks delinquent, which first of all shows us a violation of the law of Demeter here. But aside from that, it shows us that we need another potential null object this payment history, we'll need a null for that as well. Let's create our factory. create our check for is null. And now we have to modify the customer with the payment history, just like we modified site with the customer. So let's give us a little space here. Have our backing member. Now we'll add our functionality to the getter. So now this should always be a concrete implementation 
of some kind, even if it's one that represents a null value. In fact, we no longer needed this check. And so this get weeks delinquent now needs to be virtual and pushed out into the null payment history as well. And of course here we wouldn't be returning a default value, we'd be returning some sort of value. But we don't have that in this case, just to make this compile, it's zero. And then here our default value would of course be zero. And so here we are now getting our weeks delinquent directly from the customer. Whether or not the customer is null doesn't matter, whether or not the payment history is null doesn't matter. We'll be getting those values from an object somewhere. That object either has concrete data for us or default data for us. But either way, the conditionals themselves have been removed from the code and we're now using a little more encapsulation and polymorphism to maintain the default states of what would otherwise be null values in memory. And that's it for introduce null object. Thanks for watching.